The aim of uh, the project, the Cato Manor Green Street project, was to demonstrate the range, a wide range, of socio-economic health and environmental benefits that you could get from sustainable design and resource efficiency interventions in low-income housing, and to show that people's uh, quality of life can really be improved while at the same time you're keeping development on a low carbon path. We're currently supporting various projects valued at over 12 million rand a year in support of South Africa's low carbon economic growth and trade objectives. We're currently exploring uh, options jointly with the South African government to support your low carbon aspirations through a very much larger renewable energy and energy efficiency uh, uh, set of interventions. Interventions that would not only help lower South Africa's carbon emissions, but also bring economic prosperity and create much needed jobs. The Cato Manor Green Street uh, was really just one of those special projects that, that captures people's imagination. Uh, there are just so many good kind of aspects to it. Um, it's one of those <coughs> really heartwarming projects. It didn't really start out as being a general sort of good uplift, um, upgrading and greening project. It was specifically designed for the COP17 conference, um, which is all about uh, climate change. And its objective was really to show how you can reduce greenhouse gases by cutting energy use. Um, and we wanted to show how simple I interventions could uh, reduce energy use in low-income houses by about 50%. Um, and it was modelled on the Kuyasa project in, in Cape Town, which was the first project in South Africa which was uh, registered under the Clean Development Mechanism or the Kyoto Protocol. And we, we believe that if you can cut uh, energy use in, in low-income houses by 50%, and you multiply that by the, the 3 million uh, houses that are still to be built, the backlog in South Africa, it makes a really big impact. Cato Manor Green Street was one of those projects um, where we partnered with World GBC. The objective was a, a, a project that could raise the profile of how important the built environment was in combating climate change, um, and one which covered both the developed and the developing uh, components of, of the built environment. Another project that we're actually doing with World GBC is the development of a new social and economic uh, category for rating tools. And this is going to reward buildings for uh, creating employment, transferring skills, and improving health through the, the whole process of construction. And it's going to kind of clip into existing rating tools to introduce these developmental issues. So what did we do in the retrofit? We started with extensive community consultation and training. And I think that's what really makes a difference in this country, is, is to try and do things with the community. If you're going to be working to benefit the people have to be involved right from the start. Um, and we did four major energy efficiency uh, interventions, uh, solar water heaters being the first one. The insulated ceilings were um, ISA board, um, and they're represented here today. Um, they, they sponsored the ISA board, which is basically the insulated ceiling in one. Um, very light to use, so it's easy to put in. You put up a steel structure and then put these panels in. Um, and we also tested insulation roof uh, paint on top of the roofs of a couple of them. Efficient lighting, the CFLs that are, that are the major rollout from ESCOM. The Wonder Bag, which is one of those things called hot boxes, or it's, it's a ins heat insulation cooker. And this is a particular brand of, of, of uh, one called the Wonder Bag. <coughs> they save energy, cost, and time, and they save up to half a, a ton of carbon per year if you use it three times a week. The thermal comfort in these homes has changed dramatically four to six degrees cooler this summer. And the ones that had the, the snow coat on top, the, the insulation paint, was a further two degrees as well. That's a significant temperature differential. Um, and we're going to be experimenting with a few other insulation types in phase two as well to see how far we can go with that. As Bruce said, it, um, we did achieve up to 25% electricity savings for those homes where they did take it seriously. And then 105 tons of avoided carbon per year just from these 30 houses can generate revenue and are going to be generating revenue to come back and feed back into the community for maintenance and, and development projects. If we did this retrofit in the 3 million existing RDP homes and, and breaking new ground homes that exist now, 
3 billion rands of electricity and water savings would go back into the pockets of poor people to be spent on things that they really need. And I think that is one of the most significant things that's come out of this, is if we want to save poor people money in this country, um, and these are not the poorest of the poor, they're living in formal homes, but you know they're, they're going through hardship. And three billion back into the pockets of people like this is significant. That would go and feed into the local economy. It would generate, it's written there in millions, but we thought the best way of putting it is, is 150,000 years of work. So it's 165,000 people working for a year. Now, if you did it locally so that people could get trained up in their communities, it would be maybe a shorter period, but more people than that. So you can cut it different ways depending on how you did the project. But that is significant work creation potential. And with the skills that go with it, the carpentry, electrical, plumbing skills that go with it, and you know, we know that the CETAs are in this country are, and, the, and the further education and training colleges are being geared to providing these kinds of skills. So let's see how they could be directed so that local teams could be skilled up and do this work. 3,400 uh, 3, gigawatt hours per annum saved. Now, we know that, that poor people are not using a lot of electricity, so these are, not the, these are not big industries and commercial buildings. But it is significant, if you add it all up, it's a third of, the city, uh, of a city the size of Durban or Cape Town. That's not insignificant in terms of keeping, you know, keeping power off the grid when we're so short of it in this country. And then if you took all of those houses, the, you could generate almost 10 million tons of carbon per year that could be sold in international markets um, so that that would be generated uh, revenue to go back into those communities.